So good evening, good morning, everyone. Just one person more, twice. Okay. Uh, yeah, today I would like to talk a bit about the progress on uh, uh, V19 uh, data frame data set. Um, on uh, how we are going to, uh, what, what are we going to do after uh, V19 is ready? And uh, then uh, there's uh, a chance, I mean like uh, one, of, one of the persons from another team uh, published uh, a call, call for papers uh, on, uh, for a conference organized by the Springer uh, publisher, uh, publishing house, and uh, the idea is maybe we can going to, to publish something uh, about our work in a search team, but it's just a, uh, yeah, a kind of proposal, something that we can consider. Uh, that's three things that I would like to talk today. So the first thing is how it's going with uh, uh, V19. Because now I'm processing uh, this notebook prepared by Mary. It's a, ver it's a version of uh, Brandon's notebook for sections. And I'm running now this on the server for the whole data set, uh, V19. Yeah, so Mary made the changes um, first the, to process the new V19 for, data for sections. Um, and then I have been working over the weekend. I'm working this morning. Probably a little bit of the day I'll be done um, doing it on the different levels on a uh, sentence and uh, yeah. paper. Perfect. And then uh, you I, can... just, I, got, I got I got Mary's new notebook set up locally, and I'm just been um, working locally on um, yeah. doing the different levels now. And uh, and then you, can you share it on the uh, GitHub so that I can I can take it. Uh, yeah, did you see, I put, I, I made a repo to give it so me, Mary, and uh, Kostur and everybody else could share what Mary had done so far. Okay. Do you want that? Uh, yeah, I mean, just, I need uh, this note, I mean, like, I have a link from Mary. Uh, last thing, it's like, GitHub, uh, court preprocessing sections V19 note. Yeah, that's the most recent, and then when I'm done, I'll push mine. Okay, cool. To the same, uh, let's say, folder or yeah, map. Yeah. And Perfect. what exactly was changed in uh, Brandon's notebook? Um, hmm. I would have to think back. It was part of the time I spent a lot of that um, trying to get it to work, trying to just get it to run as it was locally. Um, and so I, I don't know if I made any changes about installing spacey models and stuff like that, or if that was just for me, but then there was also, um, I found that his pre-processing and parsing of the JSON files was, um, there were a couple thousand abstracts that, um, uh, that we were still getting them in like a dictionary JSON format instead of actually extracting the text. And so I went ahead and changed some of that so that um, as far as I could tell, all of the text was totally clean. And then um, I also ended up doing my work um just in pandas um i know that brandon had a lot of um for loops and um iterative processes and stuff like that um but then for me when i when i added when i when i ended up just adding the code for the sections it was really only just just a couple lines mm -hmm. and is it shared somewhere public yeah, you, uh, I can give you a link. Wait, I, yeah, or I can too. Yeah, it's like uh, it's a public repo. Okay, and have you seen there are some some uh, 
columns containing two uh, links to uh, PDF, uh, to JSON PDF. Oh yeah, yeah. Like how they changed the the for. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I um, let me just take a look here to see what I did with that. Yes, I had to change um, a, some stuff in Brandon's prepros metadata function um, so that it was reading in the um, the files in the way that um, so the the new data frame um, get it, uh, simplified it by giving us. Um, the file path for each of the JSON files and whether it was PMC or PDF um, right there in, um, uh, in the data frame. And so I changed uh, the pre-process metadata uh, function to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. And uh, how you, you deal with two files? You're just reading one by one, by one or what you do? I believe um we read in uh if it has the pmc json then we read that one in first and then if it doesn't have um if there is no pmc then we read in the pdf and then um if it does not have a pdf uh or um pmc file then i'm not sure if it um emits like an error or a warning message or something like that but mm -hmm. yeah but i think it should be really uh verified because i saw a few values in one column which is not okay it should be processed separately somehow a few what hmm? a few what in one column uh, so for example um in column that pointing to pass of uh, json files uh, you can find uh, two values of pass. Oh, I see. So is it like, so they have a list in there or something? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. So if you'll try to do processing, it will get only first and it will complain about second uh, pass. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. At least, at least it was in in original Brandon as a, um, notebook. Okay. Yeah, I would have to take a a closer look for sure at it. It's it's been about a week since I worked on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can take a look at the data, uh, and see like wh where the duplications are, where things aren't really lining up, just to make sure that what we're getting from V nineteen is actually like what we can is like clean because I, I actually saw the same problem you did where you, you would point to the json files and it'll be like multiple json files under the json column and it'll totally spaz out the whole the whole processing lucas what do you think uh yeah i mean like uh do we need to to find out do we need to uh, process, like to run this over the whole data set or can we uh, ac like uh, accommodate it before running? Uh, or uh, we, we, should, we should do it right now, I believe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we should, we should definitely pull some samples that have that instance of two values and see and make sure that it handles <laughs> it correctly. But, okay. And before, we run, before we run it on the full data set. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. so and do we have a good like an idea what type of duplicates again like what causes the duplicates or not yet or just we're just observed that we have a duplicate well i i'd seen that uh there was some there was a couple cord this is back on v9 or v12 or uh -huh. whatever so i don't know if it's the same for v19 yet there were like cord UID duplicates, um, which was really weird to see in places. Um, and well, there if was... We, if we're talking about embeddings, again, everything was done by like ever, like the way it was structured, every sentence 
was creating like a new row in the processing pipeline, that big data frame. And every row was having like core UID of the article, then like section number, kind of like again the, the location. Of the I, I, I was talking more about the original, about the original metadata that uh, the metadata file you'd get. Oh, okay. So there were 33 duplicates for core UID. It's a well-known, I mean, it's supposed to be 33. a well-known fact about core UID. Oh, okay, okay. FAQ. 33. So, yeah. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, no, just sounds right. Okay, because it's like the question is how many? Okay, there is some minimal uh, amount of uh, is a minimal size of a sample that we need to take to to find such a duplicates and to uh, let's say to accommodate uh, our code for them. If it's just thirty three, I think that for fifty thousand uh, papers, I don't think we can like it doesn't make sense now to to try to, to accommodate it we can just to try then to read in the whole data frame once it's ready filter out those 33 with double ids and uh, change them that is much easier than uh, let's say now to like to try to accommodate the code without having samples on which we can try out this uh, you know, uh, this new version of the code because we don't know uh, actually exactly which ones uh, uh, they are or do we i read a quick function to search for it i would assume uh, this isn't an issue that i've looked at well i think from uh, our point of view from infrastructure it would be nice to create kind of process uh, to do quality check of original data set Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that can we put on the agenda, like to to work for next time. To mm, well, um, what do you mean about that? It's too late. What do you mean specifically about that? Sorry, Dylan, could you repeat? What do you mean specifically about that, Slava? Well, what I want, uh, so after um, we'll get new release v20 or v I don't know 50. It should be some kind of process to do a quality check. So it should be automated, like to, to check metadata first and after to check uh, uh, all uh, JSON files if everything is there. So it's like a step that should be done before pre-processing, I would say. Okay. Basically something to check that the assumptions we've made about the data are still true, like the assumptions made in the code. Exactly. So no, it's a just quality check that makes sense. If, it's, uh, if it's okay to do processing. Process. Yeah, because we kind of pre-process under some assumptions, so it'd be good to have something to make sure those assumptions are still true for the new version of the data. Yeah. And, okay, uh, mm -hmm. and just in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, differences between data sets, I, I had a call with, uh, with, uh, with Maya, and she claimed actually that there's uh, some thousands of papers that disappeared from the previous versions, and they are considered by by the team, by the VT team, as important, as re relevant to the search questions. So, of course, it's not up to us now to talk about it because it's a much broader thing about the Kaggle data set itself. That they removed actually things that are you that were used by by other teams in previous in the for the first round uh, submission. So yeah, I mean, um, they, they they will be maybe a topic to like to uh, also to compare different data sets in terms of things that uh, they are removing. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, that's life. It's not possible to change that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, I mean, like, from the point of the view of the search engine, it's okay. It's the, I mean, like, you have a new data set point. Uh, and uh, for them, it's quite a problematic because they had some results, and those results based somehow also on the papers that the, the, the Kaggle uh, has removed. So, yeah, but, but it's not so big problem because now we have a MongoDB service uh, providing interface yeah. for all papers. So we can easily get something yeah. missing from uh, yeah. like 
Please. Other data set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Uh, okay, so uh, because now I'm I'm trying to to get this uh, version of Brando's notebook I got from Mary to uh, to run on the whole data set, and it is just 33 double IDs papers. Uh, I can I can try uh, to run it over the whole data set, like to produce V19 for sections, and then if there uh, there is still like if we consider this problem with double IDs as problematic, then we can just filter out them in the data frame itself and to change data frame so that uh, they will be split or removed or cleaned up or whatever. Yeah, we can handle them in some kind of way. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, that's okay. No, because I, I didn't know how 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 big is how big this problem is. I mean, like how many uh, double IDs we have. Uh, but I think even if it's thirty three right now, it'd be good to think of a way to handle it. Just yes, yeah. yeah. You know, next time it's fifty three, and then it's seventy, and then it's you know. Okay. Good. How about a, how about I take a look at the at the new V19 stuff, look at the metadata and see what discrepancies there are between the metadata and the actual files, see what kind of weird stuff is in the rows, and then uh, and then come back. Um, I'll, you know, I can, I can, I guess, do a little bit of exploration today and then come back and see like, okay, what do we want to fix? Maybe some rows we can fix, maybe some rows we decide to throw out. Um, yeah. Does that sound, does that sound good to you guys? Yeah, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah, if, if, you, if you like it. <laughs> Yeah, sure. well, it's got to be done, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I think that would be. I think that would be good to have somebody doing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, that's. And if you'll create a separate notebook to do that, it would be really a good idea. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll make a separate notebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, okay. So I think that's about the data frame. Is more or less how we have it under control. Uh, there are some still questions uh, about data frame, like V19. Preparation. Okay, so then uh, the question is about how we use, how we fit uh, this V nine, this V nineteen to be uh, into Elasticsearch and uh, yeah, semantic search. I mean, like for Elasticsearch, uh, the question would be to Slava actually, um, uh, because actually, I, I can build an elastic search on a. Oh, no, no, no. Well, why do you need elastic search? We have a service and we okay. have scripts. Uh, so, after you'll produce all these JSON files, okay. we can yeah. just transmit complete folder to Elastic. It will okay. take us like three hours, but uh, after okay. it's already it's manageable. There. Okay, okay. Good. Yeah, we did a few times already this process. So, okay, but Anton knows, uh, Anton has exactly the same script, so he can also run. Okay, then we have uh, Elasticsearch yeah. and then Semantics. And I would like to to, uh, to store everything in MongoDB for, um, you know, storage purposes. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, Good, yeah. Good. No, perfect. I mean, like, just, I, I want I, uh, I want to just to ask how we can proceed with it. I mean, like, we have a process for this established already. Yes, mm -hmm. we have. Okay, that's that's good. And then for the semantic search, uh, it's uh, more complex because it is related to this embeddings. And my proposal is that uh, I'm trying, uh, like, okay, I need just to outline this idea shortly. That actually we don't. I mean, the, 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 in my estimation, it doesn't make sense to to produce a, a whole uh, like search tree. For elas for semantic search for the whole data set because uh, actually elastic search is much more uh, much more um, I mean like it works better for uh, search for on the entire corpus on the level of documents but we can produce uh, those semantic search trees on the level of single documents so. The idea is to first to use Elasticsearch on the level of entire documents, and then you have uh, to have a uh, fifty thousand smaller uh, search trees on the level of single documents to pick up sentences or sections that are uh, related to any kind of query we do, because it would be mo much more efficient. Because we are we have also some. Uh, 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 resources limitations and uh, to build a search tree for 50,000 documents and all sentences in them 
uh, it will be, uh, I mean, like only one single person uh, who will be able to use it at once. So it's much easier just to store like 50,000 smaller trees and select them according to the results uh, from Elasticsearch. What do you think about it? <laughs> I think okay. it's something for next next round. Okay. Oh, no, just okay. Yeah. I, I would say. I would say. Uh, yeah. Continue. Please continue, Dylan. Yeah. Sorry, I was just gonna say theoretically it sounds sound like reasonable, but I'd I'd have to look at the I'd have to try it. Yeah. I mean, just okay. I I want to just to to, to throw this idea on the table and uh, okay, we we will we'll talk about it later on. Okay, then it's uh, the, the second point and the third one. Okay, it's uh, this public. I mean, like, I, I I gave you a link on the on the Slack about uh, this conference in in July, organized by Springer. And if you will, if you want, uh, we can so we can publish a short paper, four pages on things we are doing here about search engine. Uh, if, we, if we have something in three weeks, we can just sum up this as a publication. And if some of you are interested in this kind of stuff, then we can proceed on that. I don't know. It's up to you. I mean, not. I, I don't need the answer now. I mean, like just something that uh, you can think about somewhere in this week. Okay. No, it's a, it's a good idea if we'll get Yeah, some. sounds good. I mean, like, yeah, just, just just saying that then we can make this as a, like, uh, like, uh, like all persons being in the search engine uh, team, we can contribute as a, as a team. And just, it's just four pages, so it's also not the, a huge amount of editorial work to, 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 like, it's rather, and we need to provide documentation for search engine, so we need to describe those things anyway. I mean, like, we need some PDFs describing. Uh, guys, uh, so I just went to the, to the Kaggle site. Uh, it says it's version 20 now. Oh, oh no. I, uh, <laughs> okay, well, we're going to stop at version 9. We're going to, we're going to, Stabilize at version 19, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah I yeah, mean, like, that 19 is this, and then we'll figure out what will be an incremental update for the point, unless there are some really breaking changes yet again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's early 20, oh shit. It's mean, like, now because now I downloaded, I downloaded uh, the, the, the version from, from Kaggle, and I don't know actually what I'm running on. Oh, you might be running on 20. Oh shit! I mean, like, I, that, uh, I can feel I can feel Mary shaking over there after what? having. To I mean, that's like, what Lucas, you're supposed to use Dataverse and do uh, everything from there. Uh, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, that's it's, and yeah, because don't we just data in Dataverse, right? We should just all be down. We shouldn't be downloaded from Dataverse. Yeah, we we will upload everything on Dataverse, and you know, <laughs> I have uh, um, previous release, so don't worry, guys. So V V nineteen will be downloaded from Dataverse. Uh, well, you can still I'll, get it from Kaggle, right? Can you... What's what's Dataverse? Ah, Dataverse is a data repository that we are running. Okay, um, I will provide link for you. Uh, okay, yeah, send him some mm. docs. Slava, we have already V19 on the Dataverse. We have. Yeah. You can also version on Kaggle. If you do the Kaggle like URL and then slash version slash V19 slash V yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just, I, I did it. I didn't. But, but it's, uh, it's not sustainable. Yeah. Uh, so. No, yeah, we should be versioning on our side. Yes. I'm, uh, if, if something will happen with previous versions, so uh, I think they are hosting on Google Cloud or Amazon. I, I don't remember exactly. But it's not sustainable. It means that any version that not latest can can disappear. Uh, and it's a zipped version. That what we have on the dataverse. I yeah. think that okay, cool, good. But then I change it. I mean, like because I didn't, I didn't even expect that they change that every single week. I mean, like, and I think uh, Brandon even uh, uploaded uh, version nine in JSON. So okay. like after preprocessing, yeah. 
so okay, so uh, and, so uh that... by the way, by the way, MongoDB now yeah, is running uh, V19 also. Okay, so, so maybe can... maybe let's focus on uh, V19. Okay, my uh, my proposal would be uh, let's focus on V19. Let's forget all about V12, uh, V20. We, everything what we're now doing, <clears throat> we're doing for and on V19. And please check if you prepare any kind of code. Make sure you work with V19 and not accidentally with V20 or V12 or V what's whatever else. Uh, yeah, I mean like to be sure about it. And then next week, or I mean like at the end of this week, uh, well, once we have V19 uh, in all versions, uh, I mean in all se like sections, entire documents and, and sentences, everything uh, put in the database. Then we can think about V V20. We can establish a process to uh, to 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 produce a new notebook, to produce new data set, etc. And let's and then we can also think how may, how often we are going to update our uh, versioning, our versions of, of the data, because if they they are going to update the the Kaggle the the Kaggle data set every single week, we don't have time to like to to rerun our notebooks every single week to produce a data set that No, is... no, no, you, you, you just need to do uh, actually to extract Delta and uh, ah. I believe there are like, like one or two thousands of uh, new papers. Yeah. So it's feasible. Yeah, uh, the, the, another question is when they remove the... Okay, then we can also... Think yeah, we can also do that. Okay, so yeah, okay. So this is why we actually need this uh, quality check notebook. Yeah. So Hachatur, if you can create it, uh, it would be nice. Yeah, good. I'll I'll, t I'll 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 do I'll do that, and then I'll I'll see what's I'll see what's up with the V19. I'll mm -hmm. get that from Dataverse, and then I'll come back with you guys and be like, all right, here's how we should do the quality process. So next time something new comes in, we can you know we can mm -hmm. get what we need. And I can give you some ideas too of like places where you might want to start. Just Nothing systematic that I did, but things that I, I did as like just very brief sanity checks um, when I was uh, reviewing things before. Okay, I'll take you up on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll ping you with that uh, sometime tonight or tomorrow. All right. Okay, and uh, I have an idea about that. So uh, Mary, after you'll finish uh, your uh, Sanity check. Uh, can you take a look into our new process? That because uh, what we did, uh, we we just actually created classes based on a uh, uh, notebook of Brandon. So mm -hmm. we kind of packaged everything. So now it's possible just to use library, and you can make a code of notebook very clean. Oh just great! Read, read something from Mongo and ju just do processing. So yeah. it should be Perfect. simple. So yeah. I will share notebook with you and. Uh, it will become part of our um, yeah, data infrastructure soon. Yeah, sounds great. And it would be also possible, for instance, when I run something on my server to download this from the data uh, MongoDB as a data frame, or uh, it's already uh, so. If you'll read instruction, okay, uh, <laughs> on data. If I read. <laughs> yeah, so this notebook and uh, this notebook contains a uh, process how to read data. Uh, papers uh, and uh, this full text from MongoDB, how to get affiliations, how to get alt metrics for every paper. So it is quite, you know, already yeah. coming to uh, different pieces coming together now. Okay, perfect. When you share that, would you just share it on the channel so I could see it, see it too, Slava? It's on the channel data. I oh, think. it is. Channel oh, data. Oh, channel. oh, please, all guys are welcome to sometimes to check. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds good. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions uh, further on? No, just just nice T-shirt from University of Groningen. Uh, yeah, I, uh, all Dutch people <laughs> would be happy about. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, about the V19, or it's just like we have enough of uh, V19. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, so, so let's focus on V19 to get this everything done, and then we can we can talk later on on anything what what we are going to do next week. Uh, 
So I mean, when are you are you going to start uh, processing? Yeah, I know. I, I'm doing now, right? But I need to touch it because I downloaded already the whole V19 uh, original data on on the server. But probably it's this V20. So then I I'm, now I'm going to to switch to. to I, okay, I'm going to uh, dataverse. Actually, I'm trying to, to to get this from dataverse, and then uh, I'm going to run uh, Mary's notebook. And we'll see what's what, what's happened. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so um, I did some experiments. So, well, uh, my server uh, had to run like I think forty-eight hours or something, and after I switched off <laughs> the process. Yeah. I, how how many CPUs do you have? I have only eight, but I have one hundred forty-six GB of RAM. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting over here with my 16. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, uh, so it definitely has, uh, you know, opportunity to <laughs> to optimize processes. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I mean, if it's some something like the whole night, okay, then I maybe uh, we can invest a, a couple of hours of coding to to make it faster. Just by. I, yeah, pro probably we should do it in like uh, in in more uh, like GPU way. So we we have to check. And do you have some GPUs uh, on your super server? Uh, yeah, I have. But uh, the question is actually uh, because th this model from um, this model, I think my, my like what I presume is that because the model of of the science spacey uh, large even the large model is lightweighted model uh, it's written in sci sci siphon c5 siphon and it's like uh, you don't need a, a, a really a gpu to run fast the problem is it, we are putting everything in data frame and maybe that's the problem uh, why, this is why why you need a lot of ram yeah the yeah. data, data frame is the problem and not the fact that you have some light weighted uh, let's mm -hmm. say language model to to limitize to tag etc the problem is that you want to put 50000 papers uh, in one data frame that's why uh, why you no such. it's not not the only one problem because uh, we basically have like 64000 of uh, files in one folder and the process of Brandon is just reading one by one. Really? So that's 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 the case. So yeah. So okay. only to, oh. only to to read everything will take like three hours. So it's not like split in the sense. Okay, I have the list of the so many files and. No, no. Yeah, so so basically, the process is like to read everything from meta metadata file to data frame, and after rotating. Okay. No. Okay. It doesn't make sense. So uh, no, no, because I thought it was, it's like things in the sense that uh, we know how many data we have, how many files, but we have so many uh, processes. So mm. then we 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 group. Uh, uh, all data into small sub parts and each process uh, gets a single group of i don't know 1000 uh, well well in uh, original op implementation i would say uh, it's like 500 parallel <laughs> processes that do something so uh, yeah. j just for your information if you'll run in this configuration probably your server uh, server will die after five minutes at least uh, you should be really careful. So run on like two or three streams first and <laughs> to see what will okay, happen. No, no, no. It, I thought, okay, just so in terms of reading, for instance, it's like, okay, uh, I, I take a closer look at it because I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that it's like, uh, is that somehow suboptimal in terms of. Uh, because if, if you'll kill your university uh, server, it will, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wish I, I didn't know. I mean, okay, thank you. I I, I take a closer look at it uh, because yeah, then it's, if you if you first need to read fifty thousand documents, then very mm -hmm. I mean like then for sure you will wait. Which is why we, we need MongoDB to read it uh, really fast from yeah. directly from storage layer. Okay, okay, good. I mean, thanks. I, I didn't know really. I, I know. Uh, okay, so the, uh, still some questions. Because we are run out of the of time, so uh, if no, then I would like thank you.
uh, and we will see on Thursday. And uh, feel free to, to 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 message each other on on Slack whenever you need, uh, whenever you want. Thanks a lot and uh, good luck with with the notebooks with MongoDB. And have a good day, evening, morning, night. <laughs> See you guys. Bye bye. Have a good day.